yes, do not worry, you know, about doing something and not seeing the result immediately. Just make sure you're putting in the work and eventually you see, you know, harvest of what you've been sowing. Welcome to the conversation on your West Health Vision Network, your digital first for an African news network. Reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital city. And of course, my name is Adesua Osui. You do know that the conversation is quite always interesting and engaging. And I'm going to be talking about something quite controversial and, you know, interesting on the big story today but before then uh we we'll straight into stories and happenings from across africa uh starting with kenya so a pin out implant procedure on a man suffering from erectile dysfunction in kenya has been carried out by a leading private hospital in the capital nairobi according to the aga khan university hospital this was the first time such an operation had been carried out in east and central africa so yeah um that's uh an, ach an achievement for Kenya, actually. Moving away from that to Malawi, where um, the country has declared an outbreak of polio in the country's capital, Lilongwe. The detection of wild polio virus in a young child will be the first case in Africa in more than five years. So in August 2020, Africa was declared polio-free. The World Health Organization said that the new case did not or does not affect that status. Gladly. Uh, you know, glad about that one. And then Zambia, um, the liquidation of Zambia's influential privately owned newspaper, The Post, was on Thursday, as yesterday declared illegal by the Supreme Court. The newspaper was liquidated in 2016 for alleged failure to pay its debts and taxes. The publication always disputed the move wildly viewed to have been political. And that's it for stories and development from across Africa. I'm bringing you COVID-19 updates from across Africa right now. And afterward, we'll be going into the big story. You're still watching the conversation on TOS Television Network. As I always tell you, you have to be a part of the conversation. Just follow TOS TV Network across all social media platforms. That's TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube. It's TOS TV Network. And of course, stream our content on uh, our website by that for news and stories from across the world. It's www.tostvnetwork. Com. Now straight into the big story, the crux of the conversation. And today we're going to be looking at, I did mention earlier that we're going to be looking at something quite controversial. So um, the issue of get rich quick syndrome among the young Nigerians has been on the front burner for a while now. And then it has, you know, degenerated into having to see young persons as young as teenagers, you know, having to, you know, engage in ritual human killings, you know, to get rich. And that's what we're going to be looking at this morning. Funnily, or surprisingly, members of the Senate have blamed um, Nigeria's movie industry, that's Nollywood, for the rise in the spate of ritual killings among young Nigerians. And I'm going to be looking at that this morning. I have with me um, an actor and a director, Desmond Okie, to, you know, help dissect that you know, perspective this morning. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Show. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So, Nollywood... Yeah, Nigeria's billion dollar, um, you know, movie making industry has been blamed for the spate in the rise of ritual killings among young people. Being an actor yourself, well, how would you, you know, re react to that? Uh, thank you. Um, I don't think that is the case at all. I don't think Nollywood or um, film in general or drama in general, it's um, the reason for the spike in ritual killings. Mm. Um, why, is, um, why do I say this is because um, um, the movie industry or film is more or less a reflection of the society. Mm. So if we're going to blame Nollywood for that societal vice, it means probably we will have to blame them for almost everything. So mm. robbery and whatever, you, what, what not. So I don't think Nollywood is the reason for the spike in ritual killings. That is definitely, um, that's my view. Mm. Um, I think it's, like I said earlier, um, it's a reflection of our society. So what film does is to, um, is to educate, entertain, and let the people know what, it's at, what is happening in the society. Mm. So we, movies or films, they don't go out of the society. They don't go out of context. They just emphasize what is happening in the society. 
And I think um, um, they don't tell you to practice, practice these things. Mm. They just let you know that this is what is happening. So um, it is, it's now left for you to discern between good and evil. And that's why in most of our movies, we, there is always a, a repercussion for the character playing or the character who has, who has gone foul or who has committed certain offense. Mm. So they let you know that, yeah, these things are happening, but there is, there is an end to it and, and it's, 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 it's bad yeah. for you, for the character, lastly. So I don't think Nollywood is the problem because um, you can't stop the film industry or you can't stop, um, um, you can't remove film from the society. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I, I, do, I, I know I heard of a case of a young man, a, a kidnapper. He was caught with human parts. Um, yeah. it, it was, and not if with human parts. I think he was caught with, you know, he kidnapped somebody. And then when asked, he said it was his first time. So when asked how he got, it was your first time, but you did it more like a professional, how? Mm. He said he had to just watch, uh, I think it was Zuby Michael, one of the Nollywood actors, that yeah. he just had to just watch and follow through what he had seen. And that was how he was able to do it. Uh, and I had seen cases of, you know, people saying, uh, they shouldn't be showing people this kind of things because I think it's just going to enhance what's happening in the society. Don't you think that somehow, somehow, even the movies are, you said, film a reflection of what happens in the society, but somehow we still have to, you know, hold filmmakers responsible for all of this, right? It, I, I just think it's you trying to tell them not to, not to tell the story as, as, as it's happening. Mm. So do you want me to color it? Mm. We all know this is what's happening in the society. Do you want me to color it? There are kidnappings everywhere. Mm. There is one social vices or the other everywhere. Do you want us to color it? Or do you want us to tell it as it is? You understand? And like I said um, earlier, there is always that um, message to say, this is not the way to go. Mm. This is happening, but this is not the way to go. And I don't think it's just for the... Um, um, it's also for... Um, security agencies mm. to because a lot of these um, um, screenwriters they usually do their research before they put up this stuff mm. so whatever they are putting out is probably what they've researched about you understand so those who are watching it even the security agency or law enforcement agencies that are in charge of securing lives and lives and property should know that well okay this is a reflection of what's happening today so if this is happening and we're seeing it on, on screen, how can we try to prevent this from happening in yeah, reality? Yeah. You understand? So I think the, 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 film, the filmmakers, the actors have to tell it as real as possible. Mm. Otherwise, then there's no need making film. So you're saying that these are already existing vices yeah. in the country right now? Yeah, there are already existing vices. And I think um, it's always been there. It's always been a part of us, though we don't want it, but it's always been a part of us. Mm. But I think the reason why it's um, become um, glaring or become, becoming obvious is um, with the advent of social media and other um, internet and all, so we get to get news travel faster. Mm. Otherwise, these things are what happened in our local environment, but mm. we didn't have the, um, um, the luxury of internet, so we didn't know what's happening. Um, but now we, we can know, we, we, we get info from, um, we get news from what's happening in different parts of the country and even across the world. So I think um, it's been happening. It's still happening. Um, but because of the advent of internet, we get to see these things mm. um, um, much, um, it's, it's much glaring now. That's just it. Um, that's it. So, so, so to, to finalize this, what, what would you say should be done? You had mentioned the security agencies are, you know, having to just follow through work with movie directors and all that to see how um, they can maybe be proactive in dealing with all of that. But aside that, what, do you th what else, maybe in a minute, what else do you think could be done? Yeah, um, I, I think um, f more research needs to be done mm. when screenwriters and movie makers make movies. Mm. But beyond that, um, I'll just speak generally. Um, these things are social vices and um, much of the work does not lie in the hands of, um, f of the filmmakers oh. or it's, it's, it's largely in the hands of government and institutions that are responsible for creating an environment to be sure that these vices don't exist. So if there is um, poverty, for example, then people start and there are a lot of idle youths and jobless persons around, mm. but they need to survive. So they start looking for means, yeah. you understand, to, 
to survive. And the unfortunately, the quickest means that they could get that it's through one or two societal rights and they find themselves in, in this situation. So I think much of the work lies with the government and with institutions who should create this environment to make sure that these things don't happen. Okay. Because if they happen, definitely filmmakers and media or whatever, they are going to, to let the people and general public know that this is what obtains in our society. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for joining me on the conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. And thank you for staying with me up until this time on the conversation. Do not forget that I'll be back here. Same time, same channel next week. Yes, I will be back here tomorrow because conversation comes to you every weekday. That's Monday to Friday. But do make sure that you have a very, very restful weekend. And while you're doing that, follow TOS TV Network across all social media platforms. It's TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube. It's uh, TOS TV Network. And of course, stream my website for news stories happening from across the world. It's www.tostvnetwork.com. My name is Adesu Thank you. And I'll see you on Monday.